Well, I sure do hope that whatever's in this box isn't what it's labelled as. <laughs> I don't think so. It shouldn't be. What it should be is what it is. Yes, the packaging is a little beaten up. But it is a Sylvania Unilux 150 watt high pressure sodium lamp. Now this one has a little bit of a difference to it. It's a self-igniting lamp and it's designed to run on 175 watt mercury vapor gear. Now that's the next question where the mercury vapor gear is. Well, this is the next part. An introduction to one of my lights. A Sylvania B2222. Now, you might be able to see in there that it does have a lamp installed. Now, that is a 175 watt mercury vapor. Not the easiest to come by in Australia. Uh, used a lot in America though. Now, I need to get him open. You'll have to bear with me one second while I get a pair of pliers. Ideally, you'd want to use a spanner. But uh, that isn't that tightly done up. Now this is the a bit of a bit of a second run of the Sylvania B2222 with the plastic cover. Unfortunately, the little hinge part's broken off the end of it. It'd normally hinge back like, like this. But, it's rather, the rather simple idea with it is there is not a lot of room in there for an igniter. So that's why they brought, brought them out with the, uh, the 175 watt mercury ballast. But, they were initially intended to have the Unilux lamp in them. And this is just to restore this old beast, you know what it came out of the factory as. A pers uh, they're a personal favourite light fitting of mine. Ever, ever since I saw one being installed as, as, as a kid my parents, outside my parents' house. But, uh, there we go. Uh, God, it's another one of those. It's got all the uh, all the uh, month initials and numbers from one to zero, and no edge. I've got a couple of bulbs like that. But, here we go, put the right bulb in him. I'll just do a very quick one. Just a quick fire up. Because I don't want to hang onto a hot lamp. 
just to show you, yeah, it does go. It does work. Uh, now this bulb is going to be archived in my collection because I don't have any other 175 watt mercury here to run it on. But this... This... Now that's how you start an old sodium lamp, that's a bit different. Now there's a little bond, there's a little switch in there that should open as the lamp warms up. So the wire around the, the wire around the middle of it's actually to get the thing actually to get the thing started up like like an exciter like the, uh, the starting electrode in a mercury lamp. But uh, I'll soon see whether or not that is a switch. It does appear to be one. But there we go, we're getting a little... Yeah, we're getting some temperature in that bulb now. Look at that. Nice, beautiful sodium glow. I don't know whether that worked or not. I'm trying trying with this new camera to see whether or not I can take photos while I'm videoing. Well, obviously, that's just a connector. But, let's close him up. The diffuser bowl, yeah, well... It's the sort of condition you'd expect for something that's uh, 24 years old. A little bit of a mark in it, yeah, of course. Something's, something's being thrown at it. A little bit of crazing and cracking, but nah. That's what you get. The brand new, well, well, well brand new bulb in a 20, 24 year old fitting. Gotta love these these things. If they had never replaced them, they would have they would have lasted for years. In fact most of my collection is lights that have been taken down that have been replaced for some of the silliest faults. Like uh, a blown PE cell, the light they take the light down and replace it. Rather than just simply go, remove the PE cell and put a new one in it and leave the light where it is. Well, there we go, guys. Well, that will be enough for now. I hope you like saying hello to my little uh, B2222. And that's getting a little bright. Oh, see you next time, guys.